This is the new TT Artisan 500 millimeter f6.3 lens for mirrorless cameras. And this is one of the smallest interchangeable lens cameras ever made, the Pentax Q7. So naturally we have to see what happens when you put this lens onto this camera. But there's no adapter out there that exists to do this. I have the TT Artisan and the Fujifilm X mount and the Pentax Q mount is only about eight and a half millimeters flange distance difference between the two mounts, which is not a lot of room. So this is gonna be hard. While I design this adapter, I'll give a shout out to Per Gear for providing this lens for this video. They're an online retailer for several lens brands. You can check out this lens in their store down below with any number of mirrorless mounts, including full frame ones, as this lens is full frame compatible. And now it's Pentax Q compatible. Okay, it's not the perfect adapter, but it feels really secure, which is the part I care about most. I'll put the file out there publicly so you can download it for free in case anybody else is trying out this absurdity. <laughs> Can't believe that I did this. But before we go out and see what this lens can do on a camera it wasn't designed for, let's go out and get a baseline on a camera it was designed for. I took the lens and camera combo out with me to shoot some wildlife, and I was really concerned about how the image quality would hold up. In order for this lens to be much better than just buying a vintage telephoto, it needs to be sharp, wide open, and most importantly, not have terrible chromatic aberrations, those little purple fringing bits you get on highlighted edges. And that's a tough ask for a long telephoto lens. On the Fuji X crop sensor, this lens becomes about a 750 millimeter equivalent, which is already pretty insane. And while f6.3 isn't considered very fast, it is still letting in quite a bit more light than f8, which is something you'd normally find in this range for a consumer priced lens. And that little bit of extra light is gonna be really important to help keep the shutter speed higher at all times, even in lower light situations, which you have to have, especially on a body like this, the Fujifilm X-T1 that does not have sensor stabilization. Even with my relatively steady arms and hands, I had to shoot at least one 1,000th if I had any hope of not getting a shaky image. Here's what I found from the images. Chromatic aberrations seem impressively controlled with no annoying fringing that would totally ruin a shot. There is minor fringing wide open. You can see these in the extreme examples I have here, but these can be removed pretty easily in post like of this shot with the moon. So for a consumer ultra telephoto lens, I'm pretty impressed. You can also see how close we can get to the moon without a crop, which is impressive, but we're about to get three times closer with the Pentax Q. Trying this out for the first time, I immediately ran into a big problem with my custom adapter. There's a little switch on the Pentax Q mount that when partly depressed, turns the camera screen off and I can't get the adapter to slide in correctly to release that and turn the screen back on. After some tinkering, I figured out a way to unscrew the adapter slightly and it seems to work, but now I'm super sketched out that the camera is just gonna fall off. So that's why I'm holding it awkwardly. It's hard to get the moon even in the frame. It's hard to keep things from wobbling. Seeing the moon this up close in the live view is just unbelievable. And I even took some video on the Q7 to show you. It's not great quality. This is an older camera and it wasn't even good video for the time, but I think it's cool nonetheless with the clouds passing by. And you can see clearly the other problem with this setup, which is that a light wind makes this shake like crazy. And although the Q7 has sensor stabilization, I don't think it's really cut out for the 2300 millimeter equivalent setup. The image quality is pretty good. It's hard for any lens to stand up to a f over four times crop factor. But there actually is more detail on the Fujifilm shot just cropped in on that newer higher megapixel sensor. It also has a pretty impressive close focusing distance, which I really liked. And the bokeh, the out of focus background looks pretty good actually for things like portraits if you wanna stand a hundred feet back from your subjects. Just make sure you're only taking pictures of your own children because even I would call the cops if I saw a guy hanging out the window of their car with this lens. But you do look like an absolute boss walking around with this lens and it's easily the cheapest modern telephoto prime of this distance available in mirrorless mounts. That is if you don't count mirror lenses, which are a whole thing on their own. For $329, I think it represents a lot of value. It's not nearly as sharp as my 300 millimeter prime high-end professional type lenses, but it absolutely can get the job done on a budget. While shooting with it, I just kept thinking how cool it would be to take it to a place like Yellowstone, where you're shooting bisons or bear off in the distance, where you don't really need the quick autofocus, but you do need the reach and the quality. And on a budget, I wouldn't be afraid to take this lens. The manual focus is totally doable, 
I mean, what do you think people did before there was autofocus? Like, do we have shots from the Olympics? Yes, we do. Oh, and as fun as this was, I don't really recommend mounting it to a Pendex queue.